everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today, I have a bonus video for you. Amanda Wakely, OBE, a successful fashion designer, has had an interview reflecting on Princess Diana and Catherine, Princess of Wales, and even a few comments on Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex. And I thought it would make a perfect chat for today's video. If you'd have not heard of Amanda Wakely before, she is a British fashion designer best known for her evening and cocktail dresses and her accessories for her clean glam signature style. She has also developed a presence in daywear, including day dresses, tailoring and knitwear, and a line of accessories and jewelry. And she also has a successful podcast. When Diana was the Princess of Wales, Amanda had the privilege of dressing her a few times, which she spoke very, very fondly of. She said that Diana really understood the power of clothing. The message that she could send with clothing was something that Diana not only knew very well, but was very intentional in doing. This is something that Catherine, the Princess of Wales, also does really, really well. Being sure that you're wearing the right type of clothing for the occasion, but also sending some sort of meaningful message with your clothing is a nice, subtle way to do it. It doesn't come off as preaching or pontificating when you just do a little hint or a little nod towards this or that through your outfits. Putting meaning behind your presence is something so important and powerful when it comes to ladies in these types of positions. Part of the frustration with Meghan Markle's outfits has always been that she wears something inappropriate for the occasion or does something with her outfits that's not appropriate. You're showing complete and utter disregard for how you are presenting yourself. This is not the same as a shallow obsession with having everything perfect and styling yourself over the top all of the time or never leaving the house without makeup. It's not the same as that sort of vain, vapid, even narcissistic at times, self-absorption. This is about being able to read the room, know the occasion, and show respect for it. As I've said before, it puts meaning behind your very presence when you're intentional with your outfits. You can either take away from your value at an event by dressing inappropriately or having some sort of fashion faux pas and kind of damage your image in that moment, or you can enhance it. You can add to it. You can let people know stuff about you without having to say it out loud. The fact that Diana knew that way back then is part of the reason why she's become such an icon. Because looking back, although some of those fashions were very 80s and not exactly the aesthetic we go for anymore, they were always appropriate for the occasion. They were generally, at least eventually, well suited to her and still allowed her to express some degree of her own style. She did not have fashion faux pas. She was not showing off her bra and things like that. She didn't need to do anything like that for attention. And by making those subtle tributes, she was able to communicate and connect with the people there so much more powerfully. And that's the same thing that we see reflected in Catherine, the Princess of Wales now. Amanda says that this emerald green suit worn by Diana was very much her aesthetic. She clearly didn't shy away from pops of color and having something that was polished and classy, but still had some degree of of a fashion forward element to it was definitely something that Diana had a good balance of. Amanda was speaking about the power that the royal family has when it comes to fashion. It's a 28 billion pound industry annually. Huge. She said that Kate is the best endorsement and icon today and I wholeheartedly agree. Catherine the Princess of Wales is the best fashion icon we have today because looking back, she's not going to look weird or out of place or like she was following, chasing trends, trying to dress in a way that wasn't her. Her style aesthetic is very well defined and the pieces that she wears and the wardrobe that she builds for herself is very much timeless, which is essential but it also still brings in trends, but it pulls trends to her rather than her running out and wearing the first pair of giant pleated man pants she can find. Instead, she's more thoughtful and intentional and she wears the wide leg pants that flatter her, making her trendy choices much more timeless and appropriate and realistic, which is exactly what turns her into that fashion icon status. You cannot underestimate the level of recognition of the Queen, the Princess of Wales's style. Their fashions are as iconic as Marilyn. When you put those items in front of someone without the person, most people know who it belongs to. 
but that's a very small pool of ladies. Now, if you were to look at the outfits or the clothing items themselves with the person not in the clothes of Princess Diana, the late Queen Elizabeth, Marilyn Monroe, Audrey Hepburn, Catherine the Princess of Wales, Jackie O. If you were to look at these clothing items without the person in them, most people alive today, adults at least, would recognize who it was that made those outfits famous or made those clothes famous or who they belonged to, who wore those styles. And that is the difference between somebody who is making their own, carving out their own style and creating a, an icon status for themselves by accident simply by making good statements with their clothes that's very custom to them. And there's not very many women in history that we can do that with, that we know that is that person's aesthetic, that is that person's garment right there. And the soft power of, for example, Catherine wearing high street earrings or more affordable blazers or outfits, and even the expensive ones too. But when she does that, she boosts the fashion industry. Small business owners have had their lives changed simply by Catherine wearing the earrings that they sell. When asked about Catherine's jewelry wearing habits, Amanda had this to say. She wears the jewels and tributes lightly rather than flashy, look at this, but rather bringing it along and a gentle nod. That is exactly on point with her. There was a fashion editor not that long ago who was like, Catherine doesn't seem to really enjoy wearing the jewels. I'm sorry. I think that's wrong. I think she does. Who wouldn't enjoy wearing some priceless, gorgeous, historical piece of jewelry? But she's not a super fussy, flashy, over-the-top person, and she's not presumptuous. So she's not going to assume that she gets to wear or access all these extra things. She's going to allow whoever is the queen or the monarch to guide her through that and allow her to wear something and suggest to her something. Also, you have to keep in mind right now, there's a cost of living crisis, not just in the UK and the United States, but like literally everywhere. Things have gone out of control. There's inflation and stuff. People have struggled for years now. So being ostentatious with over the top, excessive amounts of jewelry all of the time would not be received very well. And she is here for the people. That is clear in her path as Princess of Wales that she wants to be here for people. She likes connecting with people, especially children. You can tell she cares about them genuinely. That's what she's more concerned with. And lots of wealthy looking jewels and special priceless items doesn't really vibe with that very well. So it's kind of a silly comment that that fashion editor made. I love that the way that Amanda phrased this, that rather than having a flashy moment, instead, Catherine brings it along. When she has a piece of jewelry on, it's got intention behind it, it's well thought through, and it's the right time and place to do it. And often is paying some sort of tribute to either someone, some cause. Like for example, when she wore the earrings given to her by a mother, who the earrings were made in tribute to her daughter who had passed. Those sorts of things are much more meaningful and powerful. And that sort of soft power of being able to wear something and sell it, but doing so from a place of goodness and genuine reasons is, is that authenticity that gravitates people right to her and, and makes her just one of those people you can look up to, but also is just doing such a good job, you feel proud of her for making those types of choices. She's not tempted by a vault of jewels like we've seen from some others. I've spoken about King Charles and his wardrobe habits before. I actually really like him and I think it is spectacular that even he rewears a lot of his items. He rewore his dad's camel coat not that long ago, Prince Philip's camel coat. Charles is known to be somebody who won't throw out a pair of shoes, he'd rather take it to be mended. Same with coats and clothing in general. He'd rather have it be mended, adjusted, fixed up by a tailor than thrown out and buy a new. And I absolutely love that about him. Not only is it relatable in terms of we all do that with our wardrobe, even though ours are not at the same price point, while he's fixing up a thousand dollar suit, maybe we're fixing up a hundred dollar dress, it's still the same thing. And it shows that he's not focused on being flashy or just spending money. He's leading by example, he's relatable, he wants to keep his outfits that he likes, and I just find that to be very charming. On Meghan, 
She said, royal dressing as stealth wealth with a modern twist is what Megan's doing. Not loads of color, often reached for cream and ivory. So I, she didn't comment on whether it was appropriate or not, but I will. Um, modern twist or not, stealth wealth is not exactly the approach you should take if you're a part of the royal family. It's also not really an approach to take if you're trying to win over the public the way Meghan and Harry are right now. They need the public to get behind them eventually. If they want to be hired, if they want to do things, if they want to continue to be invited to do charitable things, if they want to repair their reputation in any way, shape, or form, they need to be liked by the people. And right now, they are not. And part of it is that stealth wealth dressing. When Meghan is always reaching for things that are designer and extremely expensive, it sends the wrong message to people that that is more of a priority, flashing those sorts of things, than the actual events themselves. When she reaches for things that are not an appropriate option for an event, it shows that she's not caring so much about the event and the people, but rather herself and how she looks. It leans into that exact what we were talking about earlier of the vapid, vain, narcissistic sort of path that some people get stuck in when it comes to their appearances. That they're so hyper-focused on their appearances in an unhealthy manner. And they make choices that don't make much sense. Attention-grabbing choices that end up getting them more ridicule from people than anything else. She went on to give some insight into the whole uh, you can't wear the same color as any other senior members of the royal family thing. She gave some insight into that from her knowledge as working with Princess Diana, who by proxy then was also working with Charles, at the time, Prince of Wales, Queen Elizabeth. They argue the color issue. All it is is a message comes down that the Queen is wearing blue this day, or please wear tights, please wear a hat. Otherwise, nothing was dictated. The Queen was confident enough not to dictate others' outfits. In fact, she knew she was the center of attention as the Queen, but wanted to push some of that off a bit. So she didn't feel the need to tell others not to dress brightly. It was more out of politeness and perhaps for pictures to let those attending alongside her know what color she would have on. She wanted her granddaughters to hold their own and feel confident. We all dress appropriately for our jobs and the occasions. It's not a negative, it's just dressing appropriately. I agree completely with this. This insight into the Queen's approach to dressing and working with a group of people is exactly what's appropriate for etiquette. The host or the leader of any given situation, in this case the Queen, it is only polite to let people know what you will be wearing or what color scheme is expected for the photographs and for the occasion. This is really, really common in events when you are hiring a professional photographer. A lot of professional photographers will say, hey, you might want to let the people who are coming to this photo shoot or this day or this occasion know to dress in certain tones or colors because it is the worst if you're doing lots of blues or something like that and somebody pops in there with like orange, it just doesn't fit with the photographs. And to avoid those sorts of like picture ruining moments like we saw Megan do a lot to the royal family, putting out a statement or listing on the invitation, the types of color schemes or what the main character or the host will be wearing is just polite. It allows the other people to have a little bit of an idea of what will go best and look nicest next to one another because you're gonna be around each other and photographed. And it makes perfect sense that simply they were letting you know that the queen was gonna be wearing like yellow that day. So perhaps you won't show up in like olive green because that would look really grody next to each other. Instead, you would be smart enough to know to show up in something like a pale blue or a pale pink or even a bright pink because that looks really pleasant next to almost any shade of yellow. It's leaving the onus on the other person. The queen says she's wearing blue this day, then it's on you to pick something that's not gonna clash with that so that you don't look like an idiot. And I love that she said she wanted her granddaughters to feel confident and come into their own and have their own bit of the limelight and that she wanted to push some of that limelight out. It only makes sense and it tracks very much with the Queen's character from what we all saw. But it also was a very classy way of disproving what Meghan said. I think it was Meghan who interpreted the message of the Queen will be wearing such and such as a 
instruction not to wear that exact color. I think that that may have been Megan jumping to conclusions a little bit because evidently these messages do not dictate what you can and cannot wear but simply let you know that the queen's gonna be wearing a certain color. Then it also isn't saying you can't wear that color. Maybe she just thought that's what it meant and didn't have the ability to understand that it means try not to clash. That's all. As for wearing tights or a hat, that makes perfect sense. She's the monarch at the time, the queen, now the king, head of the church. So saying that you should wear tights for certain occasions or a hat for certain occasions makes perfect sense. Everybody's wearing hats and you're not, you're gonna stick out in a bad way. So these sorts of things were more to try to help people be sure that they're dressed appropriately than try to deter them from like doing what they want or whatever. It was trying to help somebody out. And again, dressing appropriately for an occasion is the exact same as wearing a uniform for a job. Everybody does it. It's totally normal. It sounds like she kind of didn't agree with Megan's comments about dressing when it came to engagements with the royal family, which is nice to hear some people speaking up who have real tangible inside knowledge the way she does because she was in on helping to dress Princess Diana for certain events and occasions, then she had all this intel. And so she's well placed to inform us. She went on to discuss Kate a little more. She knows the power of when she wears something, so she very much sprinkles it about. She will spread her attention, so to speak. A lot of the sales come pouring in from overseas, which is a huge revenue for the UK. For people who dismiss the power of the royal family or its importance for the UK especially, they're missing the fact that simply by having an appearance where Kate or even Camilla is wearing something fabulous brings revenue to the UK simply from people all over the world who are fans, the Commonwealth and beyond who want to wear something that she wore. That makes the UK a lot of money. That goes to the UK itself. It's not going to Catherine. She doesn't get commission off of these things. It's a big part of the industry and recognizing the fact that Catherine is intentional with it, that she will wear things from smaller, lesser known brands, from affordable brands, as well as more expensive, fancy stuff. It shows that she cares about the accessibility of these things as well. When asked about Queen Camilla's changing fashions, she says that she's bringing in a more modern style. It's regal and beautiful fashions. She's wearing more color now. It's very interesting because she needs to be a bit more of a focal point now. Now that she is queen, Camilla does need to be a little bit more um, in the spotlight. She is next to Charles and Charles is king. So I think Camilla is really good about just stepping back and being in the supporting role. I think she's shown that she's not super worried about stealing the limelight in any way, shape, or form. She seems pretty laid back in terms of that, and I, I respect that. I think that's great, and it's good for their relationship. It's good for King Charles. But as queen, as the other, like, most senior royal there, she does need to wear a little bit more commanding of outfits, and that's probably why we're seeing a lot more color now. We're seeing a little bit more fanciful things, things that are a little bit more attention-grabbing. And I think that's great and I really like seeing her explore more because before you know I didn't take too much notice of what she was wearing much of the time and now I've seen a lot of really beautiful colors really interesting choices and She went on to say that clothing is our armor. It doesn't have to be aggressive It can really just be something that makes you feel great It gives that protection and reassurance of armor and is confidence boosting because camera can be unflattering it's so harsh. So looking your best and knowing you'll have a polished look helps to minimize the bad pictures and angles. The camera can be brutal, hugely unflattering. So if you look the best version of yourself, you can relax into your role, which is exactly why being really mindful of what you wear on these types of occasions is what we talk about so much on this channel. If you're gonna be on display, whether it's for a performance, for an engagement like this because you're in a position of this nature, you're an ambassador for something, anything. If you're presenting, you wanna look your best. If you're on a special occasion where there's gonna be fo photos taken, like at a wedding, you wanna look your best because you cannot control what angles you're getting photographed from or videographed from. So dressing really carefully all the way down to your undergarments is essential to avoid bad angles or bad moments where you feel uncomfortable, look uncomfortable, or have some sort of wardrobe malfunction happening. That is why these sorts of 
extra precautions of smoothing garments and wearing the right types of bras and making sure the fit is good and it's tailored and it's hemmed neatly and everything goes nicely. All of that stuff's so important because of that, because without it, then you'll get caught out with bad angles and stuff. And that's not going to help anybody's confidence. And this brings me to the Meg and why she looks so awkward and strange. It could be because she's not comfortable. She's wearing clothes that don't fit her well. She's wearing bras that don't fit her well. I know when I've had to wear a bra that was like too big or too small for some reason, it was terribly uncomfortable. I was fidgeting with it all of the time. It was horrible. Or if you have, if you're lacking a slip, you're going to have panty lines showing. It's just the worst. So perhaps she was wearing stuff that felt uncomfortable to have on and thus she couldn't actually relax and focus in on the moment, maybe. Because if your clothes don't fit properly or you know like you can't bend without it like tearing or pulling or you're going to have to rearrange your skirt every time you lean over, then you won't want to move. You won't want to engage the same. You don't want to sit down. You want to get it over quickly because you're uncomfortable. Or if you're wearing shoes that are way too big, you can't walk in them properly. You take these awkward, funky steps that we see Megan take. Or you have to cling on to somebody so you don't fall down. Or you're getting blisters so you start to get cranky and you really just want to go. You want the event over with because you need to get out of these uncomfy clothes. We've all had times like that where we're like, I can't wait to get out of this outfit. It's the worst or something. Or you don't realize how scratchy the tag is. You forget to cut it off and then you can't until the end of the night. It's so preoccupying and just it's the worst and it does affect your mood and it affects how present you are in any given moment. So perhaps that's part of why we had so many awkward encounters and, and awkward looking moments on camera with her because she was so uncomfortable and preoccupied with her clothes not being correct that she couldn't actually be the, the best she could be. Maybe that's part of why. What do you guys think? But it's also part of why we see Catherine the Princess of Wales able to do all of these things. Sit on the floor with the kids and play and bend down and be fully present. Because she puts that extra thought and effort into getting ready so that once she's there, she's there. She has no more need to fiddle with anything or do any further prep. It's all done. And she can just be there and do a good job. So that's also part of why it's important. So if you have a special occasion, invest in good foundation and a good outfit and good shoes that will allow you to be fully present. You don't wanna be at somebody's wedding or your own wedding and be uncomfortable because you didn't splurge for the more comfortable heels or because you're wearing the wrong bra that's just poking into your rib cage. You don't want that. You wanna be comfortable so that you can enjoy it to the fullest and that all your memories from that evening will be spectacular rather than being preoccupied and uncomfortable. It's not necessary for our day to day. If we're running to the grocery store and doing school runs and things like that, we don't need all the stops pulled out. We really don't. But when you're gonna do something special, that's when it's really worth it to know these things so that you can really enjoy it to the fullest and look your best while you're doing it. Please leave in the comments how you liked today's video and let me know. Click the like button if you did enjoy it and feel free to subscribe. It's free so that you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thank you so much for joining me with this chat. I cannot wait to read the discussion in the comments. I will also be sure to link the original interview in the description box. Thank you so much. I hope you didn't mind this bonus video and I will see you in the next one. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye.